Is it better to get a solar installation or to put that money into a financial investment instead? It's going to get quite complicated, but don't worry, I'm going to walk through it step by step, so stick around for the whole video to make sure you get the full picture. I know I'm going to annoy a lot of people on both sides of the argument with what I'm going to talk about. I've been thinking about it for a while now, and I think I've convinced myself that the way people talk about solar as an investment is fundamentally flawed, specifically the concept of return on investment. Every time I talk about my solar and battery system and how it saved me loads of money, I inevitably get comments saying, you'd be better off investing your money on the stock market, you'd get a better return on investment. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that those people are wrong, but I think it's not as simple as that. You can't simply compare the return on investment of a solar system to a financial investment. They're different in some very important ways that I'm going to show you in this video. People usually fall into one of two categories when it comes to why they decided to get solar installed. Some get solar installed because they want to reduce their impact on the environment by generating their own power and get a good feeling from knowing that they are less reliant on the grid for their energy needs. The fact that it saves them money on their bills is certainly beneficial, but it's not the primary reason they got their system, and I fall more or less into this category. The second category of people are those who think that installing solar is a good financial investment, and they couldn't give two hoots about the environmental benefit. Of course, there is also a sliding scale between these two extremes, and you can decide for yourself how much of each category you would fall into. I certainly couldn't reasonably say that saving money on my bills wasn't a consideration at all when deciding to get our solar system installed. And I wouldn't have gotten a solar system installed if it would never pay for itself. But my main motivation was the reduced environmental impact of our energy demand. Personally, I don't care why people get solar installed. I think as many people as possible should, if they're able to, regardless of their reasons for doing so. Although I will say that if you're looking to reduce your environmental impact, you are unlikely to find a more cost-effective way of doing it than installing a solar system at your home. And money is very important to people, of course. So I wanted to make this video to hopefully help people decide for themselves as to whether or not installing solar is right for them. So I'm going to take you on a series of thought experiments, starting with a simple concept and then building on that piece by piece until we have what I think is a more or less complete picture of how we can reasonably compare a solar install with a financial investment. And hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand my thought process. And of course this comes with a spreadsheet that I've created which I'll be making available so stay tuned until the end to find out more details about that, how you can get hold of it and how to use it. Now I'm not expecting everyone to agree with me, I'm fully expecting plenty of comments along the lines of but you didn't consider such and such and that's fine, I doubt I caught every edge case although I would encourage you to watch all the way to the end of the video before commenting because you might find that I cover your point later on. So let's get started with a simple but very important concept you have to pay your electricity bill somehow. This is critical. Everything I'm going to describe from here on relies on that one irrefutable principle. You've got to pay your bill. So let's say you want to find a way to pay your electricity bill or perhaps some portion of it for the next 25 years. And let's assume that the amount you want to cover is £1,000 per year. And to be clear, this is ignoring price changes for now, but don't worry, we'll, we'll come back to that later and just assume for now that your bill is currently £1,000 per year. You also happen to have £10,000 kicking around, lucky you, and you decide that you can use this pot of money to pay for your electricity bill somehow. Now you decide you can do this in two potential ways. Scenario 1, you can get a solar system installed, possibly with a modest home storage battery, that will reduce your bill by £1,000 each year. I think this is a reasonable, possibly conservative annual saving on a £10,000 system, but you can use your own estimate if you prefer in your own copy of the spreadsheet that I'm using for this, and I'll speak more about that later. Or scenario two, you can keep that £10,000 in the bank and use it to pay your bill each month. And don't worry, we'll be converting this into a proper financial investment later, just bear with me for now. Now to keep things simple, let's assume your solar system does indeed reduce your bill to completely zero. It'll make thinking about it a bit easier, but the same principles will apply if it only covers, say, half your bill. You just ignore the half that you're not covering with the, the solar system and assume someone else will pay that half instead. So if your bill was actually £2,000 a year, your solar system would be covering half of it, while a kindly family member might pay the other half, for example. My point is that you can safely ignore the bit you're not covering with your solar system because that part remains the same in both of these two scenarios. From now on, we're going to match every saving we make from your solar system with an equivalent reduction in the pot of money from scenario two. That part is very important, as we need to compare like with like, i.e. how much of your bill you're covering in both of these two scenarios. Now you might say, well, why don't you pay your bill from your regular income and then invest that £10,000 without using income from it to pay your bill? That way you'd get the compound interest on it and it would grow even more. Well, because we're not comparing like with like if we do that. If you have a solar system, then you wouldn't need to pay your bill from your regular income, so you could use that money for other things like holidays. 
which you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't use your investment to pay your electricity bill instead. You could, of course, use your investment to pay for those holidays instead, but you'd be back to using your investment to provide an income, so we're back to square one. Isolating this comparison to just cover your electricity bill ensures that we're being as fair as possible when comparing the two alternatives. OK, so if you install a solar system, you no longer have any money in the bank, but you also no longer have any electricity bill to pay for the next 25 years, which is the typical lifetime of a solar system. Regardless of what happens to electricity prices, you're covered. No more electricity bill. But what if instead you kept that money in the bank and used that to pay for your bill, or at least the part of the bill that matched what you would have covered using your solar install? You'd get something that looks a little bit like this chart here. So I've made one assumption with this chart to make things a little bit easier to calculate, and that's that at the end of each year, you pay off your electricity bill in one big chunk. So you get to the end of the first year, you've built up a thousand pounds of electricity bill, and then you pay it off in one big chunk. So your uh, bank account drops by a thousand pounds, and that happens uh, for the subsequent 10 years until you run out of money uh, at the end of year 10, obviously, because each year is costing you a thousand pounds and you've only got 10,000 pounds in the bank. But Tim, I hear you say this is clearly a ridiculous scenario. You would never put your money in a non-interest paying bank account. Of course, you would invest this in some sort of sensible financial investment. So let's see what happens if we do that. So now what I've done is I've put our £10,000 pot of cash into an investment that pays 8.78% each year. So what happens now is at the end of each year, you receive a payment from your investment uh, equivalent to 8.78%, and then you pay your £1,000 electricity bill. And the result of that is that at the beginning of this 25-year horizon, you see small drops in, uh, in your total investment because the payment going out is slightly more than the interest that you're receiving each year. So uh, towards the end of the um, period, you're now paying more and more uh, as a proportion of your investment to the point where you run out exactly after 25 years. And you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit convenient. Well, of course it is, because I fine-tuned this value of 8.78% to make sure that it exactly ran out of money at the end of 25 years. But Tim, I hear you say, what if electricity prices change? You've just assumed that the electricity price stays the same for the full 25 years. Well, yes, of course. Uh, let's try a simple scenario where the price of electricity increases by 1% each year. And we then get a chart that looks a little bit like this. Now, what's happening here is that as we go through time, the price of electricity is increasing more and more, little bit by little bit each year, which means that you're having to pull a little bit more from your savings account to pay off your electricity bill at the end of each year, which means actually now you're running out of money just after 20 years. So now what interest rate would we need from our investment to make sure that we have enough money to last us the full 25 years? Well, we'd have to increase from 8.78% uh, annual percentage rate to 9.75%. Now, if we do that, we again, once again, we're at a situation where we perfectly run out of money after 25 years. So this situation is essentially making it entirely equivalent to your solar install. So uh, at the end of 25 years, you no longer have any money in the bank if you put it in an investment. And with an, a solar install, if you're assuming that it will last for 25 years, you've also no longer got a solar install that will provide you an income to uh, help pay for your electricity bill. So uh, those two situations are entirely equivalent. So effectively, you're talking either a solar investment that pays for your electricity bill for the, the whole 25 years, or you would need a some sort of uh, financial investment that would pay you 9.75%, assuming that electricity prices increase by 1% each year. But Tim, I hear you say, what if electricity prices actually go down over that time? Well, here's what would happen. Assuming that electricity prices actually drop by 1% each year, then if we use our uh, previous example of 8.78% for your investment, you will actually find that by the end of 25 years, you've still got something in the region of £6,000 left in your savings account. Now that clearly makes an investment a superior option to um, having some sort of solar install to cover your bills instead. But the problem with this is, are you sure that electricity prices are going to drop by 1% each year? Well, uh, some people think that electricity prices are going to continue to drop. They've been dropping um, recently, obviously, after the very large spike that we had uh, in 2022. I'm not entirely convinced that that's going to be the case. Um, uh, the argument goes that as we add more and more renewables to the grid, the price of electricity will gradually drop. So I personally don't think the price of electricity is going to drop significantly over the next 20 to 30 years. And if anything, I think it's probably going to stay roughly similar or maybe increase very slowly over time. Now, don't take my word for that. I had a look around the internet and I found a couple of sources where um, they uh, show what they think is going to happen to electricity prices. So let me show you those. If you take a look at the Ripple website where you can purchase shares in a wind farm or a solar park, 
then they show you what their estimate is for what you could save over the next 20 to 30 years um, at using a number of different scenarios. So they have what they've called a low estimate, a high estimate, and a central estimate. Now if we check their low estimate, um, you can see that what they think you're going to save each year starts at just over £100 for this particular investment. I'm not going to go into the details. They think that the prices are probably going to drop, which means you've got a smaller saving each year up to 2020, up to 2030. And then the prices are going to go up again and more or less stay pretty stable for the next 20 years or so out to 2056. If you check their high estimates, then um, it suggests that they think that prices are going to rise a little bit more, a little bit quicker. Um, but generally speaking, it's not super quick. Now, I did find another website where there was a report for Heathrow Airport back in 2022, April 2022, about from this uh, company called EIC. And they did an estimate of the delivered electricity price over the next 20 odd years. And I found a very interesting chart in this um, report. And it looks like this. So obviously this was prepared just before the big spike uh, or just around about the time the spike was happening in electricity prices. So they predicted that the price would peak in 2023, which is indeed what it did. And it would then drop back down in 2024, which is again what we've seen. And from then on, they've got three scenarios where the price sort of ticks along pretty stable, maybe a small increase out to 2041. So that's over the next 15, 20 years or so. So from what I'm gathering, I think that most uh, experts would suggest that prices are probably going to stay roughly stable, maybe increase a little bit. But you can pretty much uh, put whatever you like into my spreadsheet, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and um, see whatever you think is going to happen based on those assumptions. So one thing that you can be certain of is that historical prices have increased over time. And in fact, over the last 20 to 30 years, the historical price increase has been roughly 5% per year. So uh, let's take a look at that scenario. So what I've done again here is I fine-tuned the percentage interest that you could get from your investment such that you would perfectly run out of money after 25 years as I did in the previous examples. But this time, in order to counter the 5% increase in electricity prices, you would need a percentage increase in your investment of 13.61%. Now you'll notice that at the start of the, the period of, that we're talking about here, this 25-year window, you actually see an increase in your investment all the way up to about £13,000 in fact. But because electricity prices have been increasing inexorably 5% each year, that gets you in the end. And by the time you get to the end of the window, your electricity bill is so high that you rapidly run out of money and you uh, hit zero at the end of 25 years. But Tim, I hear you say, you've assumed up to now that your solar system is going to last perfectly well for a full 25 years. What if something goes wrong? What if your inverter breaks or your battery breaks and you need to replace it? Well, we can account for that too. So what I've done in this example is I've reset the interest to something a little bit more sensible, like 7%. And I'm assuming that electricity prices remain the same for the next 25 years. But your inverter or battery fails after 12 years, which means you have to now replace that equipment with, let's say, a £3,000 input into your solar system. So because we're trying to be as fair as possible between these two scenarios, any time we need to add money into our solar system, that's equivalent to topping up your investment. So by adding £3,000 of investment into our solar system, we also need to top up our financial investment by £3,000 to make sure that they're entirely equivalent and fair. So you'll see after 12 years, we get a little bit of a boost with the investment going up by £3,000 and then it continues to decline each year as we're paying our bill. But we're also receiving 7% interest each year as well, don't forget that. So in this scenario, we actually run out of money at about 24 years, which um, is pretty good. We, we, we've nearly matched um, the, the full 25 year window. But Tim, I hear you say, it's not only the uh, inverter and batteries that could fail, your actual panels will slowly degrade over time. Well, we can also account for that. Let's assume that after 25 years, our panels are now operating at 80%. So this is more or less the industry standard where the warranty suggests that you should still expect 80% power after 25 years with it declining linearly between zero and 25 years. So now let's assume that not only do we have to pay £3,000 after 12 years to replace our inverter or battery, we're also experiencing a declining output from our uh, solar array. And we find now that after 25 years, we've still got about £2,500 in the bank. But realistically, most modern panels will, should last a little bit better than that. Some modern panels have warranties that will suggest they should be operating at 90% after 25 years. So you'd get something that looks a little bit like this. So in this scenario, if you were trying to match your financial investment against an equivalent solar system, you would more or less find that you would run out of money in about the same 25 year window. 
And one final example, I've reintroduced a 1% electricity price increase per year, and I've set the panel degradation such that it reduces to 85% after 25 years. And you get this sort of chart here, where you run out of money roughly 22, 23 years in. But what if you don't believe any of the examples that I've shown you so far? Well, I'm going to be making the spreadsheet available for you, so check the link in the description where you can grab your own copy, follow the instructions in this yellow cell at the top, and grab your own copy for your own purposes. And what you can then do is start fiddling with these cells that are shaded in sort of light uh, purple here. So you can change the initial investments from £10,000 to £20,000, say, or um, change the in interest on the investment to uh, 5% or 10% or whatever you want it to be. And uh, you can change how much you're saving each year, so let's say £2,000. And you can even change the panel degradation, so 0.8% would give you 80% at the end of uh, 25 years, 0.4% per year would give you 90% at the end of 25 years. You can change the electricity price, uh, increase it to 1%, 2%, 5%, whatever you want to do. You can also, using this column here, add extra investment. So £3,000, for example, that would give you that. You could add another £2,000 over here if you really wanted to. However you want to do it, you can basically put any numbers you like into these cells. If you um, don't want to rely on just a straight interest rate change of energy prices over time, you can change the values in here, the uh, relative electricity price. Just start with one, and then you can go up or down from there based on where you think prices are going to go relative to today's price. So there you go. Feel free to grab the spreadsheet, tinker with those values, and you can more or less get whatever answer you like. Okay, so what am I trying to say with all this? Well, I guess the main thing is that it's quite complicated with lots of moving parts, and the outcome is surprisingly sensitive to small changes in your assumptions. For example, even a tiny increase in the rate that electricity prices change over time can make a huge impact on how much you might need to pay for your bill if you're using an investment to do so. If you believe you can invest your money in such a way that you can beat any potential price rises or that you believe that prices are going to drop rather than rise, then you are well within your right to say that investing your money is better than getting solar installed. But that's a big if over a 25 year period. We were caught by surprise in 2022 when world events caused a huge spike in prices that we're still recovering from today. And if you had installed a solar system prior to 2022 that was sufficient to cover your bill, then you wouldn't have even noticed that extraordinary price shock. It's a perfect hedge against that sort of nonsense, and I doubt you'd find a financial investment that could say the same. You get a lot more certainty from a solar install than a risky, high-yield financial investment that could go up or down at random, for example. And more importantly, I feel, is that you'd have also massively reduced your environmental impact by getting that solar install. And you will continue to do so for the lifetime of your system, possibly for 25 or 30 years. And wouldn't that make you feel good? I'm not trying to scaremonger anyone into getting solar installed, but I do believe that it's such a good idea for so many reasons that I think anyone who is able to get solar installed should at least consider doing so. If you're watching this video because you wanted proof that financial investments are better than solar installations, then you'll be able to satisfy yourself by playing around with my spreadsheet and finding a set of parameters that fulfil your beliefs. I hope I've demonstrated in this video that you can get almost any answer you like by tweaking a few values though, so uh, please do use it with some caution. I provide the spreadsheet for you to do with as you please. It's just a toy model at the end of the day designed to demonstrate how thinking in simple terms like return on investment doesn't really tell you everything you need to consider when comparing solar to a financial investment. So on that, I expect I'm going to get a ton of comments telling me how oh, I've missed this or that and that I'm an idiot for some other reason. But I'll just tell you to grab the spreadsheet and play around with it. Add your own amendments anyway. So go and do that first, then come back and tell me how much fun you've had using my silly toy model. So I hope you enjoyed that and that maybe it helped you think about solar and financial investments in a different way. And I'll see you in the next one.